Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It's a great pleasure for me to be invited to attend today's forum. As the service and supply hub for Northern BC, Prince George has have held important position in China, Canada foreign trades. I sincerely wish this forum a great success. Today, I would like to brief on the achieve major achievements of China's economic development and the challenges we are going to face and how we tackle them. And also, I would like to share with you the cooperation between our two countries and also the opportunities we are going to face in future. There's no doubt that after more than 30 years of reform and opening up, China has made tremendous achievements in social and economic development. There are two main examples. In 1978, the year when we started reform and opening up, China's GDP was 364.5 billion renminbi yuan, while last year the number was 51.9 trillion yuan. China now is the world's second largest economy. We have invested heavily on the infrastructure. For, for instance, the total length of our expressways in service was 250,100 kilometers in 2002, and the number grew to 956,000 kilometers by the end of 2012 which is quite the same scale as it is in the United States. Another example is the fast development of the in information industry, which could be well featured by the growth of internet. China today is the world's biggest user of internet, which a total of over 500 million netizens. According to the some, ex some experts, China's e-commerce transaction volume is expected to exceed 10 trillion yuan this year. China's economy has also been upgraded in terms of openness, quality, and efficiency. China's important import and export volume rose to second place in the world, and we have become the world's number one exporter. We are very we are very active in utilizing foreign investment, while at the same time, we have quickened the implementation of the global strategy. Last year, our non-financial outward direct investment increased to 77.2 billion US dollars. Our government attaches great importance to, ex to expanding investment in science technology, education, while it provides strong support to sustain economic and social development. At the end of past five years, energy consumption per unit of GDP fell by 17.2%. People's living standard achieves historical leap from poverty to over well off level. About 250 million people have been lifted out of poverty. The United Nations and the World Bank ascribe the two-thirds of the global achievements in poverty reduction to China. We have also made a comprehensive progress in developing the social security system, and today over 1.3 billion people, almost the, the whole population, are covered by various, various medical insurance schemes. Indeed, China's rapid development has exceeded expectations of many people. However, every coin has its two sides. Two sides. We still face challenges. China's basic national conditions, such as large population, weak economic foundation, and unbalanced developed development still remain. Our per capita GDP is still far behind that of the developed countries, which accounts only about 12% of that of Canada. The industrial st structure is unbalanced. 
the agricultural foundation is still weak. The secondary industry is large, but not strong. Development of the service sector still lags behind. Innovation capacity is in inadequate. The big development gap between urban and the rural areas and between the regions still a prominent issue. Economic development has been relying excessively on resources consumptions and we have paid heavily environment cost. Recent years have experienced a slowdown in the global economy and the restrained demand in the international market which has brought about a more complemented external environment to China's development. Chinese leaders have always been fully aware of these challenges and addressed the problems. A policy framework was laid out quite some time before the transition of the leadership. The 12th five-year plan issued in 2011, as you probably know, set the direction for the China's social and economic development in near future. But during the 18th National People's Congress and a further step was taken, taken in, setting out two major targets for China's development in the long term. One is the complete building of the moderate prosperous society in all respects and double both China's 2010 GDP and the per capita income for open and rural residents by 2020. The other is to turn China into a modern socialist country that is prosperous, strong, democratic, cultural advanced, and harmonious by the middle of this century, and then will be actually marked 100th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. Today in China, many people are talking about China dream. President Xi Jinping once said that China dream is a dream of the nation and a dream of the everyone single Chinese. And as, as I understand it, China dream is by nature about the prosperity of the country, revival of the nation, and the happiness of the people. The two targets mentioned above are exactly in line with our China dream and also to meet the targets requires even harder work of the whole nation. China is already well integrated with the world. We understand it very well that we can't develop in isolation. We still deepen reform opening up throughout the prog progress process of socialist modernization. So we are ready to share our dream with the world by even more extensive and intensive cooperation and to work together for our peace, stability, and development. We are confident that China's development will bring more opportunities rather than threats to the world. The Chinese economy has been growing at a stunning speed for three decades. Several years ago, some people raised doubts about whether China can maintain such a fast growth for another three decades. Following the 18th Congress of the Communist Party of China, these doubts are disposing as the new leadership of China is about to take place. This is because the message sent out from 18th CPC Congress and the current NCP and the CPPCC sessions already show that China has identified its nature di uh, future direction. These messages, including the following elements, shift the economic growth model to boost the productivity, speed up urbanization to generate new demands of investment and consumption, raise incomes and improve social welfare so that people can spend more. Strength, educa strength and education and training to, increase, to create new demographic dividend. Deepen the reform opening up as policy guarantee to further unleash the potential of the economy. I'm confident that with the above driving forces in place, the Chinese economy will continue to grow steadily 
And a recent survey has shown that China remains the world's top destination for foreign investment. The sustained growth of China's economy is beneficial for Canada. As a major developed country in the West, Canada has long occupied an important place in China's external relations. In the early 1960s, Canada took the lead in the Western countries to break the trade embargo with China. Its weight exports to China provide a valuable support to the Chinese people trapped in the widespread famine. In 1970, Canada became one of the oldest Western countries to establish diplomatic relations with China. In the past 42 years since then, the two countries have conducted fruitful cooperation in a whole range of fields, such as energy and resources, finance, science and technology, environmental protection, transportation, aviation, tourism, and education, by giving full play to the economic complementaries. Our two-way trade volume jumped from less than 100 million US dollars in the 1970 to more than 50 billion last year. People-to-people -people exchanges are also thriving with more than 3,000 people traveling between for every day compared with less than 1,000 in 1970. China has become Canada's second largest trading partner and a major, major source of overseas investment in students and the tourists. Our relation with British Columbia is moving forward too. Last year, the bilateral trade exceeds 15.3 billion. BC's exports to China reached 6 billion, a 16.4% increase over the previous year. Compared with BC's overall exports, decreasing by 3.2%. Take a forest, for example. Last year, BC's forest product exports to China reached 3.15 billion, according for 31% of total forest exports. Up to now, there are over 90 Chinese companies investing in BC. The total investment volume exceeds 1.2 billion. These investments are part of the local economy, employing local people and boosting the local economy. BC's companies in China are doing very well too. Westport, a Vancouver-based company, is a world leader in national gas engine. Since entering into the Chinese market, the company has made a huge de development. In 2012, Westport and its Chinese partner produced 45,000 natural gas engines, which is 100% increase over the previous year. Ladies and gentlemen, as China and Canada are economically complementary, we are confident that the opportunities for our two countries for the future of cooperation are huge, and the Chinese Council General in Vancouver are ready to act as this regard, and look forward to serving you in future. Thank you.